Good morning and welcome to the uh, Friday morning devotional and prayer time here at Faith Presbyterian Church. If you have your Bibles and like to join along with me, uh, I'm going to be in Psalm 13 and I'm going to read the whole Psalm, Psalm 13 verses 1 to 6. Uh, we're going through the book of Psalms and we're, we're, we're looking to find comfort in the book of Psalms. And the book of Psalms is a great place to go in the midst of trial and tribulation, um, in the midst of chaos and calamity and confusion, because um, when you look at the book of Psalms, the whole range of human emotions is represented in, in the book of Psalms. And here in Psalm 13, we have uh, someone, we have, we have a psalmist who is crying out to God and asking him, how long will this craziness continue? How long will you allow me to suffer, O oh God? How long will you uh, turn your face away from me? And, and, and the amazing thing is that at the end of the, uh, of the psalm, you would expect God to speak up. Because that's normally the pattern throughout Scripture. Uh, someone cries out to God, seeking God's uh, salvation, seeking to take refuge in God. And God answers back to them either directly or through a prophet or through some other means. Um, and, and so therefore, they, they find refuge in, in the Lord. But here, uh, we don't find God answering the psalmist. We find someone else answering the psalmist and it's going to be there uh where we find how we apply psalm 113 to to ourselves and so take your bibles and took the psalm uh psalm not psalm 113 psalm 13 i'm sorry psalm 13 verses 1 to 6 i'm gonna read the whole psalm uh the psalmist writes how long O lord will you forget me forever how long will you hide your face from me how long must i take counsel in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all the day how long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Lift up my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death, lest my enemy say I have prevailed over him, lest my foes rejoice because I am shaken. But I have trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. Well, notice how the psalm opens. The psalm opens with a series of four questions that begin with the same two words. How long? How long? How long? In other words, uh, this is an expression of, of time, implying that, that this person has been experiencing suffering and persecution and calamity for a long, long time. Uh, the other night, uh, our oldest daughter, our 15-year-old, we were talking with her. And uh, she, she said something like, we've been in quarantine forever. And, and, and my wife said to her, it's, it's only been five weeks. And, and she looked back at my wife and she said, only five weeks? <laughs> I mean, it's only been five weeks, but it felt like forever for her. And here the psalmist is saying, I don't know how long this has been taking place, but this has been taking place forever. How long, oh Lord? And notice how it's not the same four questions uh, repeated, it, it, it's four sort of characteristics of the human heart, or maybe sort of phases, so maybe four phases of their suffering, or four levels of their suffering. So, but let's look at this. Look at Psalm 13, beginning in verse 1. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you forget me forever? I mean, the, 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 the psalmist basically feels like he has been forgotten by God, um, that, that God's rescued him and God's, God's welcomed me into his presence and, and God's built a relationship with me. And now he's, he forgets that he's forgotten me. He, he pretends like he doesn't know me. Um, he's walking away from me. He takes no notice of me. I mean, how long, O Lord, will you forget me? My, my current circumstances seem to tell me that you are no longer uh, taking notice of of where I am, of who I am, and what's happening to me. You have forgotten me, O oh God. And so what do I do about this? Well, look, at the, look at the next question in verse 1. How long will you hide your face from me? Now, these two things, how long uh, uh, you have forgotten me, and how long will you hide your face from me, these two things it seems to paint God in a cruel light. God, you knew me, but now you've forgotten me. God, you found me, but now you are hiding from me. God, you're being cruel. You know my circumstances, you know my situation, and yet you are not acting to rescue me. And to hide your face, and in the ancient Near East, for, for a God to hide his face from someone was basically to say that this God has turned his back on this person. 
and to reveal your face, for, 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 for God to open his face up and set his face towards someone, was to say that, that this person has the favor of this God. So what this person was basically saying is that I no longer have God's favor. I no longer uh, am remembered by God, and I am no longer um, uh, being revealed to God. He's walked away from me. I mean, this is the depth of despair for a believer. For, for, for a believer to believe in God and to experience the blessings of God, but then to walk through a season of life where, where that person feels like they have been forgotten by God, they have been rejected by God, and that God no longer has favor over them. This is, this is the depths of despair. This is where the human heart goes. This is where the, the, the human heart, the heart of a believer goes when that person is just wiped out. And look what he says next uh, in verse 2. How long must I take counsel in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all the day? Now, why does he, why does he ask this question? Well, if God has forgotten him and if God has hidden himself from him, then the only place for this person to turn is himself. I mean, listen to what he says. How long must I take counsel in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all the day? I can't turn to God because he's gone. He's left me. And so the only place I can turn is in my own heart. And I find no solace there. I find no joy there. I find no happiness there. I find no peace and comfort there. I find nothing there. How long must I endure turning to myself? for comfort because I can't find it anywhere else. Oh God, how long? And then he kicks it up a notch in verse two. How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? I was the exalted one, but no longer. I've been brought low. But now God has hidden his face from me, but he's turned his face toward my enemy. God has forgotten me, but now, but, but he's remembered my enemy. And so my enemy can turn to the Lord instead of inward to themselves. But now I'm in the place of my enemy. I mean, this is deep despair here. This is more than just, God, why are you allowing this to happen? This is deep despair. And the beauty of this is, 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 is we are allowed to come to God with this despair. We're allowed to come to God with this depression. We're allowed to come to God with these questions. Not, not, not accusing God or blaming God, but we're allowed to come to God because we see him as our only source of refuge and salvation. That's why these psalms are here. And look what the psalmist does next. Look at verse 3. Consider and answer me, O Lord, my God. Light up my eyes, lest I sleep, sleep the sleep of death. God, produce life in me. God, answer me. Um, place in me the joy of of your salvation. Look at verse 4. Lest my enemy say I have prevailed over him. Lest my foes rejoice because I am shaken. God, answer me. Remind me of how good you are. Consider me. Remember me. Open your face to me or my enemies are going to rejoice over me and deny your work in my life. So who's going to answer the psalmist's questions? Well, notice God doesn't. It's not that God won't. In fact, God has answered our questions here in the psalmist by giving us the psalm in Psalm 13. This is God's way of saying, this is what you should do when you're feeling like the psalmist. This is what you should do when you're asking, how long, how long, how long? Answer me, God. This is what you should do. Not wait for an audible voice from heaven. Not wait for some miracle. But what you should do is take the truth that you know about the gospel and to sing it, rejoice in it, proclaim it to yourself in the midst of this desperation and despair. Look, the psalmist answers his own question. He says, how long, how long, how long? But God never tells him how long. God never says, all right, you only have to endure this for one more day, one more week, one more year, one more hour. God never gives him a time frame at all. But instead, what the psalmist does is he falls back on what he already knows about God, what he's already experienced about God. Look at verse 5. But I, how long, O Lord, how long, O Lord, how long, O Lord? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how long God is going to allow me to suffer for this or suffer through this. But I, 
I will stand on something I know that is greater than my, than my current circumstances. And what, what is that? Verse five, but I have trusted in your steadfast love. The word, the, the phrase steadfast, steadfast love is one word in the, in the original Hebrew is the word hesed, which means covenant faithfulness. That God has established a covenant with you before the foundation of the world through the person and work of his son, Jesus Christ. And this psalmist is saying, I will trust in the covenant that you've established with me before the foundation of the world. And that covenant is based on your electing love of God. I'm not in covenant relationship with you because I loved you first. I'm in covenant relationship with you because you loved me before the foundation of the world and you chose me to be in relationship with you. So I trust in that because it is an eternal covenant. My circumstances are temporary, but this is eternal. And so I'm going to trust in the internal covenant as opposed to my temporary circumstances. As a result of that, the psalmist says, my heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord. I will rejoice. I will sing. Because you have established a covenant relationship with me before the foundation of the world. And you have worked out that covenant relationship toward me before the foundation of the world in your gracious acts. Now, where do we see that? Look at the latter part of verse six. So I have trusted. I shall rejoice. I will sing because now here's the the foundation of the trusting of the psalmist in the lord in the midst of his his painful circumstances here's the foundation of, of his rejoicing in the salvation of the lord and in, in the midst of his painful circumstances here's the foundation of his singing to the lord in the midst of his painful circumstances the foundation of him doing all these things in the midst of his painful circumstances is because the lord has dealt bountifully with me in other words it's about grace i will trust i will rejoice i will sing because of god's amazing grace toward me well how has god been uh how's god dealt with us bountifully he's dealt with us bountifully through his son jesus it is in christ it is in the cross of Christ, it is, it is in the resurrection of Christ, it's in the ascension of Christ, it's in the reign and rule of Christ, the present reign of rule of Christ, and the hope of his return, where we see, taste, and experience the grace of God, the loudest and the greatest. He has dealt bountifully with us. And so in the midst of this pandemic stuff, in the midst of all these like conspiracy theories that's flying all over the place, you know what I mean, on the news, you're like, what? Where did this virus come from? In the midst of all this, all these predictions and pontifications of what's going to happen. And we're asking ourselves, how long will this chaos take place, oh God? May we fall deeply into the grace of God in that he has dealt bountifully with us through the personal work of his son, Jesus Christ. May we trust in the steadfast love of the Lord. May we, may we, may we rejoice in our hearts and the salvation of the Lord. And may we sing to the Lord because of the grace that we have received from the Lord in his son, Jesus. Let's pray. Amen. Father, thank you so much for dealing with us bountifully. Thank you for being gracious toward us in your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for blessing us with every spiritual blessing in him before the foundation of the world. May we cling to these things. May we rejoice and sing and trust in you because you have dealt graciously with us. Father, thank you for being so good to us. And all these things, all these things I ask your son's precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So just uh, to remind you, you know, email me, text me, call me if you need anything. Um, uh, watch your emails and texts because I think uh, I think later today, today's Friday, later today, I'm going to uh, uh, put out an announcement, an email announcement about uh, opening our doors on May 3rd, about what that's going to look like, um, about some instructions on, on how to come to worship uh, that, that Sunday. Um, and so be looking for those things. I may even put out a video announcement. I, I don't know. But I'm, we're going to try to get the word out as much as humanly possible, um, uh, telling people that, that we're going to open the doors on May 3rd for God's people to be gathered in wisdom uh, and in love um, and, 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 and cautiously. Uh, and gathering for, for, for worship on, on May 3rd on, on that Sunday morning. I'm excited about that.
And uh, so I hope to see you uh, next Sunday. If not, I'd love to see you sooner. Stop by the church. You can see my truck up here and, and uh, look in and let's have a conversation. In the meantime, I'm going to be praying for you and uh, and God bless you.